Welcome to the first in this series of programming on the BBC Micro by Acorn Computers. Uh, this is going to be very, very similar to my ongoing Commodore 64 assembly programming. But um, this will focus on the BBC Micro, which was the most popular uh, computer in the 80s um, for the education market in the UK, mainly because uh, the BBC gave schools and colleges them at half price and they were used for a massive, massive amount of uh, educational software and hardware and were purpose built for the job really. Although that saying, although it didn't have the sort of gaming capabilities of the C64 um, out of the box, like, like the SID chip, the uh, VIC-2 hardware sprites, etc., it still had a, a lot to offer. And uh, there have been some classic and groundbreaking games which um, started off on the BBC Micro and went on from there, namely the original Elite, which is probably one of the greatest 8-bit games ever. I'm sure not a lot of uh, people will disagree with that. But um, yes, so although the Commodore 64 series is still ongoing, this is going to run in parallel and we're going to try and do some similar things that we did do on the Commodore 64 because they're both 6502 based and um, and they both uh, have the ability to use a PC cross-assembler and an emulator to uh, actually do your coding. Okay, so, um, so let's first have a quick look at what we've got, okay? So we've got, this is what you get when you, when you switch the thing on. It defaults to mode 7, which is the Teletext mode, which we're going to be using for this, um, this programming today. Uh, and I'll, I'll go into that uh, in a bit. Um, but we've got um, several modes on here. They use different amounts of screen memory. They have um, different uh, colour palettes or the amount of colours they can display. So first of all, we have mode 7, which is uh, again used by Teletext. It, like the Commodore 64, um, or actually more like the Commodore PET. Okay, uh, it has only some built-in sort of uh, graphics that you can get through ASCII. You can't uh, customize them in this mode, which is hence why it uses a lot less memory. But the difference with this and the Commodore PET is you've got, well, it says 16 colors, but there's actually eight colors. And the other eight are flashing combinations of colors, which you can customize, okay? Um, that's mode 7, which we'll be using for this uh, programming. Um, we can say we've got mode 1, which we can just change the mode so it looks slightly different. Okay, um, mode 2. Uh, now, this mode was used mainly for games with a lot of sprites on it because. Uh, Although the pixels were a lot wider, it could display all 16 of the colors and it was it was quite fast and very quick to sort of plot graphics. Um, mode 5 was the same, except it, it had less colors on it. So it only had four colors, so it used even less memory. Okay. Um, mode 4, you'll probably recognize, well, you, what you won't for looking at that, but mode 4 was used for the main... Um, a display for the original Elite and mode. it was a split screen, it was mode 4 for the top two thirds where you see the, the ships and the planets and everything and the bottom was mode 2. So we've seen mode 7, um, there, there's a few others but I'm going in the significant ones. Mode naught is again is a text only sort of high res mode but it's only, it's only two colours. So this is good for actually typing your programs in. Okay. So, oops, so if we do mode more there, it's, um, yeah, you can see you can get a lot more on the screen. I think it's 80 columns wide. It's 40, I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll link to some, um, to some literature that actually has all the modes and what they can do. I believe, it, yeah, it is 80. Mode 7, which is the closest to the 64, is a 40 by um, 25 characters, which is exactly the same. So, um, 
that brings us on to the first um, program we're going to be doing. Okay, so let's switch to the uh, to the code, and uh, we'll, we'll carry on from there. Okay, so this is our video one from the Commodore 64 tutorial I ran. Okay, and what we did, we, we were looking at um, addressing the screen memory. Okay, so what we did here, okay, we changed the background colour to black, the text colour to white, and the border colour. Um, okay, there's our little basic upstart, which does a sys command. Change that, we did, we did an intro loop, which uh, showed some text, which is down here. Press any key or run stop to quit. Okay, and if you pressed any key that wasn't run stop, then, um, which is uh, ASCII 103 in hex, then it, um, it used this routine here, character in. Okay, and when the, character, the key was pressed, okay, it then filled the screen up. I mean, I've done that these numbers are wrong, but uh, yeah. It filled the screen up with that letter. Okay, and it, it kept doing that until you press run stop. So let, let's um, let's build and run that, and just to see exactly what we're getting is our Commodore 64. So press keys. So we can do A, B, and we, it, it, we can see how quickly it was. C, D, it, it's instant. Okay, instantly fills the screen up. Okay, so for today we're going to be setting up our um, BBC cross-assembly and VS Code and uh, hopefully those who are watching uh, who are enthusiasts for this sort of thing um, it'd be really good if you could follow it along and set your development environment up at the same time obviously pausing as and when the links for everything I'm using will be in the video description okay so and then we press run stop and there we go there's our program okay and that's all the listing it is Okay, so without any further ado, let's get our BBC Cross Assembler set up. Okay, so we're going to be using a Windows environment. Um, it is possible to do this on Mac and Linux. It's a, a little bit more of a faff, but it's doable. I've done it. I, I've even done it on my Chromebook. Okay, but for, for this video, we will be um, doing this on Windows. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is download and install Visual Studio Code. Okay, so the link's in the description, so just click uh, your Windows and install it. And when you installed it, you should end up with an open deck. You should end up with a video like uh, a screen like this. Okay. And then you can open your folder. I've already created a folder uh, for this. So uh, I will not open that. Okay, there's uh, two more things you need to download as well. Um, one is the emulator called BBEM. Okay, and the link's in the description. So this, as the time of this video, BBEM 419 is the latest. So um, this is a Windows only. They do do other ports for it, but if you've got a new Mac with an M1 chip, it just won't work at all. Okay, however, there is ways around it, which I'll demonstrate at the end of this video. Okay, so download BBM419 and install it. It will do, give you a proper installer. Okay, and then you will end up with a program that opens like this. Um, just for now, set your hardware BBC model to the Model B and have um, everything else as the defaults. Okay. Um, turn off the hard disks if, they, if they're on. Okay, so we just have a floppy drive and it's a BBC Model B, no second processors or anything like that. Okay, so there's your emulator. Just test it by going to like mode 0, mode 2, and mode 7, mode 1. Okay, just check they're all there. Okay, and then the brake key is simulated by F12, so if you hit F12 once, it does a very soft reset. If you hold Control F12, it does a full full reset. Okay. So last thing we need is our actual assembler, our cross assembler. 
links in the description you will get to here okay and just download the latest release for windows which is there and unzip it and put the bbasm.exe um, somewhere in a, in a folder on its of its own somewhere you can point to that doesn't need full admin rights on your windows box okay maybe your my documents folder. it doesn't really matter as long as vs code can see it okay so the last thing we need to do for our development environment okay is on here where we'll go to our extensions okay and where it says search extensions um, you want B VSC okay I've installed it here but like the one below you'll get an install button just click that and that will install it okay you won't even have to do anything it will just install it for you and enable it and then we've got two items to configure in the preferences for for the Beeb okay so for here it is file preferences and settings okay go down to extensions and look for Beeb VSC okay and all you need to do is put in there the path to bbasm.exe which you've downloaded so for me it's d emulators bbasm bbasm uh, i've got an older version here but doesn't really matter okay i've had it there for a while and then pointed to the xe for bbm so all it needs is the assembler and the emulator okay and that is it right excellent we're now ready so what we'd like to do is create exactly the same as what we did on the um, on the Commodore 64 okay right so here we have the advanced user guide for the BBC micro so looking a bit further into this the only mode that will do something very similar to the Commodore 64 where you can actually poke ASCII characters directly to the screen is mode 7 okay the other modes you have to you have to plot pixels to the screen and uh, so we'll be covering that in, in, a, in a, a future video but now to recreate what we've done on the 64 we will need to uh, use mode 7 as I uh, said earlier and this is exactly why okay so this is an official acorn book the advanced user guide for the bbc micro now if we look in the contents uh do you remember back near the start of this video i said um all screen modes use um different start of memory the end of memory is the same for all the screen modes but the start of memory is different depending on what mode you're using so we're going to go to this section here oops screen mode layouts yep oh, i didn't realize that hyperlink would work and we want mode seven so we'll scroll down mode five six seven okay this is our yeah so the same as the commodore 64 it's 40 by 25 okay these are all our things for vertical sync and everything which we're not too worried about for this video and definitely not worried about a light pen Okay, the start of the screen address is held here, but we should be able to see that here. Okay. So this is our layout. It's exactly like the 64. It starts at the top, goes along, and then comes around here, and around here, and around here. So the start of the screen address for mode 7 is hex 7C00. And if you notice with, with BBC, they prefer to use the ampersand sign instead of the dollar sign to uh, denote uh, hex. Probably a British thing, but who knows? So I think before we actually crack on with doing some assembly, and we're going to actually try and convert what we did originally. We're going to try and convert that um, into um, into BBC assembler because they're both six five zero two. It shouldn't be um, too much different it'd just be the the nuances for the assembler so we'll be doing the differences between kick assembler and b basm so hopefully it won't be too much 
Okay, so what I'd like to do before we before we do that, I just want to test the, the concept in basic. Okay. So we know there's we know there's it's 40 by 25, which is a thousand. So we ought to be able to um, poke something to the screen ram a thousand times, which should fill it up. Okay, so let's switch over to our BBC. Okay, right, we're on our BBC now. Let's um, let's start a little program now. This is this the basic on the BBC was infinitely better than the Commodore Basic on the 64. They did improve the basic um, somewhat for the 128, but I still don't think it's uh, it comes up to the the BBC basic on here. I mean, the basic on here is fantastic. Um, we'll see a little bit of that now, but. Um, in Commodore 64, to, um, to, uh, to put something into memory or pull it out, you use poke and peek. This one, you just use the question mark for both. So what we're going to do is, like, to put a, a, put a character in the top, we will do um, the ampersand 7C00 equals, like, 78. Oh, not, that's not equals, it's a logical keyboard. There, and that that pokes a character up to the top. If you want to read the character, we would do um, print print ampersand seven c zero zero. That's not printed. What I uh, yeah, I'm an idiot. Print peak, which is the same <laughs> ampersand. Sorry, the, the keys for this are not what's written on my keyboard. <laughs> 7C00. And that would print 78, which is what we poked. So we can see the question mark is, is used both ways there. Right, so let's start our program. So 10, we want to make sure it's in mode 7. We want to get a number. So on the Commodore 64, we'd do A equals... Uh, or get a we're going to do a equals get and this will not keep repeating this will actually um, this will wait until it's, it's pressed before it continues with the program and to save memory because we know it's going to be an integer we can change and not a floating point we can change that to a percent equals get let's just double check that it does do what we want so print a Okay, so if we run that, okay, that'll wait. I'll do a P. Oh. Yes, okay. Let's use the copy and the curse keys. Yes, it's a percent. Of course it is. Yeah, P is 80, okay. O is 79. N is 78. Okay, so we don't need 30 anymore. That was just to double check. Although we could keep it in. Okay. Actually, no, we won't. Because we're going to fill the screen with it. Okay, 40. We're going to try and write this in the same structure as we'd write our machine code. Screen mem equals, I suppose, we could do, I do screen percent equals 7C00. 50, we'll do a 4 next loop, 4i equals 0 to 999, because we're indexing it. Okay, so the screen memory plus i, so it'd be 0 to 99, that would give us a 1,000. Um, screen percent plus... Oh. Now, where's the plus on this? Not what's written. Ah. Okay, I can't find the plus. Divide minus equals zero, zero. Ah, there we go. So it's where the semicolon is. Plus i equals 
a percentage. 70 next I. Now that effectively that should do it, shouldn't it? Let's run it. Let's hit uh, A. No! Now oh, I know what I'm, yes. There's lots of things I've missed there. Okay, so I missed a question mark. Screen, percent, and I didn't do the plus, plus. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, I'm losing the plot. Screen, that should be an equal sign. Screen, percent, equals that. And look, that should be an equals as well. Equals. Yeah, it's very difficult. Um, I need to, there should be a way to configure the emulator to use the logical keys, uh, use the actual keys rather than, you know, what's the, the positional keys instead. Okay, that still doesn't look right. That's screen percent number line 40. Screen percent equals. How does that look? That's better. Right, let's run that. Okay, let's press A. Oh, now we've got a mistake at line 60. So, did you print it? Screen percent. Why didn't it like that? Uh, screen poke Oops. screen set Oops. I maybe it needs maybe it needs that fifty six print screen poke oh, syntax error now. So that should be a plus. Good, this is an assembly video. I'm not even managing basic. These are all integers, so we'll be efficient. I know line 60 is going to need fixing. I'll make that screen poke. I like, I like the editor here. Oh, it's doing something. Oh, it's printing that poke, isn't it? But look, it is starting to put letters on the screen now. That's good. So let's get rid of 56. And we'll run that. Okay, so let's do A. Hey! <laughs> then it finishes. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to... Um, let's... I'll show you a little basic feature. See, we've, we've got it incrementing in 10, as apart from 55, because we inserted that in. Okay, well, let's um, let's do rin dot, which is short for renumber. And now if we do l dot, which is short for list, you can see it's it's renumbered it all. So 90 go to 20. So it'll keep repeating. Okay, so we've got that cursor blinking. We'll have to look how to get rid of that. Okay, so A, B, C, D. 
We're still printing something there, 72. Well, we don't need to do any more printing anymore. CLS. And then that uh, list. Oh, yeah, 30. We can get rid of 30 and we do ren dot. And it's renumbered it all nicely. Okay, so we've got our eight liner there. So let's do our, let's do, look, 12 print. CLS. Where's the colon? Print, press any key or escape to exit. There we go. How cool is that? Right, how do we get rid of this flashing cursor? Right, I'll have a look in the manual and then I'll come back to you and jump cut that flashing cursor there. We don't want that. Right, I have found it. Okay, so we run this VDU command here. Okay. Uh, so VDU 23, then 1, then 0. And then because there's a semicolon here, that means these are, 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 are words, which is two bytes each. So it's 1, 2, so... Yeah, eight lots of zeros. But let's let's give that a go. VDU twenty three comma one zero 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 colon zero colon zero colon zero. Ah, oh, yes, the cursor's off. And to turn it off. We we run this command here. Or just run a mode statement. Well, it might be easier to do that. So we could turn it off that way and do mode seven. So what if we wanted to do it with just single bytes? Because we're going to do it in a similar. So it'd be VDU 23, one. Then we'd have to do, instead of that, which is two lots of zero, we'd do one, two. So we've got to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That turns the cursor off. Perfect. And if we want to turn it back on again, 23, 1, 1. And then these zeros. That turns it back on. Perfect. Right. So in our listing. Okay. We'll do, um, we'll do line 11. Oop, VDU 23, comma. One, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the last thing we'll do, oh, well, that, that, that's it for now. Okay, cursor's off, fantastic. There we go, and it's filling the screen, albeit rather slowly. Okay, so the last thing I'd like to do is actually get it to do something when we press escape rather than just quit the program okay because if we're in, if we're running an assembler we want it to return to basic in a usable way with you know with no um with yeah with with, with a cursor and a, a nice clean mode so let's look at a way of disabling the default escape um routine and um and then checking in this get here Okay, check in there the character for the escape key. Okay, because we're going to be using all that in our in our machine code program. Right, this is what I found in the advanced book here. There's FX229. Okay, so if the location is zero, then escape has its normal action. Otherwise, treat it as an ASCII code. That's what we want. Okay, so we want to change it to probably for from naught to one and then back to naught at the end. Okay, so let's go back to our program. Let's do, look, we've lost our mode seven. Okay, so. If I press escape, that's what we get. So we'll do start fx 229 comma one. And press escape, nothing happens. Then star, oh, star fx, 229, comma, zero. 
and it's back. Right, <laughs> we've got an 11 and a 12 in there. Let's do a renumber to make it nice and tidy. Okay, so after our VDU 25, we want to do star FX229,1. And what I'd like to do is I'm, I want to print the ASCII code for that when I hit escape. So if, after line 40, when it's getting the character, I want to print it and see what it is. 45, print a cent. Okay, and then I'll do I'll do a quick end there so it doesn't go through filling up the screen. So like if I do N, I know it'll be 78. So N is 78. If I run it again and I do escape, it's 27. Right, that's what I wanted. Okay, so let's do line 200 and we'll do star F X. print no, let's do a CLS print goodbye no, that's not going to work is it if we want to do a let's do a mode 7 because that will cl clear down our um, uh, that will re-enable our flashing cursor ok and then two ten FX two two nine. This will re-enable the escape. Okay. Now, if we look, if we look at our list, okay, two hundred will never get run because a hundred does a go to to forty. So what we want to do is line forty five. If a percent equals twenty seven, then go to. 200. So if the escape key is pressed, then go to line 200, which will do a mode 7, which will clear all our custom VDU commands, say goodbye, and then allow the escape key as per normal. So let's give it a go. Okay, so D is fine. Let's hit T is fine. Let's hit escape. Goodbye. And we got our flashing cursor and everything back. Renumber. Right. Okay, let's list that. Okay, so there's the program. Okay, hopefully you, you guys have been sort of typing it along with me and have got something very similar. But um, yeah, feel free to pause it on the screen here. Okay, so now comes the fun part. We would like to make this into an assembly language program using our PC. Okay, so here we are in our um, Visual Studio Code. Obviously, the the um, assembler and extensions have all been set up. Okay, so now we're going to um, create a file for this. So I'm going to click here and I'll call it video one dot asm. Okay, and what I'm going to do because it's six five zero two, I'm going to start off by copying what we did on the Commodore 64 assembler video onto it. I mean, obviously it's not gonna work as it is. So I'm copying that, that from this window and I'm gonna copy it into here. Okay, I mean, these should all be this is very similar, but this syntax here, which is assembler specific, like the screen, the, uh, the, the labels here, okay, where it starts, okay and then how we declare variables okay right so the first thing we want to do okay is put our screen mem in so we'll delete this okay so we'll call it mode 7 screen mem equals and we'll because it's b we'll keep it with the ampersand um, syntax 7 c 0 0 Okay, we've got these character in um, things there. Okay, so going through the BBC manual, okay, there, there's two, and they're in a similar place. There's um, a, a character in and a character out. Okay, um, the BBC refers to them as OS read character, which is character in, R C H R. 
okay so we'll keep it at that and we'll call that or we'll, we'll, the we'll call that that we're going to call it os r c h r os os re character okay and the address for that is f f e zero okay so they're not there but not too dissimilar from the commodore 64 kernel routines and these are kernel routines and this is what the bbc uh, the acorn actually prefer you to use although the games that push the boundaries like elite only use this a couple of times and the other one so we've got the right character which we we're poking to screen rem but we want to use the right character to um to change the um to, to, to do the mode uh, switch mode and video and fx and all that so we'll, we'll put that in um oswrch equals and that is fff4 okay right so that's that for a start but um i've got a feeling we're going to be using a lot of these across the different lessons so let's do what we did in the commodore 64 and we'll make a constant file and um, include it so we'll cut these out and we'll add to them as we go along so we'll copy that pop it there and in here i think we'll oh, let me find out what the command is again on bbsm Okay, it's simple. Include constants. Ooh, take the caps off. Oh no, it was it constants dot asm? That is it. Okay, so let's get rid of all this because this is all kick assembler specific, and when we're not going to be using any um colors it's already black and white so we'll get rid of this and we've got our we've got these in our constant so there's our constants file and we're going to be doing that importing it there and it's about oh, my typing is terrible constants okay okay so this is where you told um kick assembler where to uh start the program in memory or where to store the program memory it's very similar on here we'll change that to an and we'll keep that and we do org which is the origin of the uh program that's what that stands for so that's where we wanted to start okay right so What the Commodore 64 doing is doing here is changing the border colours and the background colours and clearing the screen. Okay. In the start, what we probably want to do is change the mode. Okay, to mode seven. Because although mode seven is the default mode, you could run the program and you'd already be in mode zero or something. So we want to ensure that we are in mode seven. So the way we do that. is to load in hex 16 into the accumulator okay that's part of the next thing okay then we jsr to our os right character okay so that's that's the character for the ascii character for mode then we load in the mode number we want well you don't have to go to ascii for that which is um, seven okay and then we jump to the subroutine OSWRCH again. So we're writing two characters. We're writing character 16 to, that means set the mode. And then we write character seven, which is our mode number. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an RTS, okay? It's, so for, just to test, we can compile and run this, okay? One last thing we, we need to do on this is these labels are in a different um, format on BBASM. Okay, so we do a start there. We always prefix them with a dot. So let's just do that with all, all 
let's do that with all of these. We can't, I mean, we, we haven't gone through and examined them yet. And there's quit, and here's our text. Okay. And then at the end, we've got to, we've got to do an end label, so it knows, it knows where to end. So we'll do an end label like that. Okay. And what we've got to do is we've got to do a save command as well. So it saves it onto our disk, our BBC disk. So we'll call that save video one. Okay. Then the start label, and then the end label. Okay. Which makes perfect sense. That's what we're saving. File on the disk called video one, and the code starts there and it ends there. Okay. So now what we want to do is we, we just want to test that. We want to test that it builds it. I mean, forget everything else here for now, okay? We can probably comment it out if I knew how to. In fact, yeah, I'll do that. Let me pop, let me pop some comments in. I think on here, it's, there's a block comment, but there's not a lot here. I'll just do it this way. Go right down to where it says end okay so we know every yeah, everything that's uh, everything that's uh, commented is still in Commodore 64 mode everything that's everything else is should work on the BBC so mode 7 return back to basic right oh just before we do that I was double checking and I realized that I made a mistake this OS write character should be FFEE. -E. I did OS byte, which is sending a byte, which we'll use later for um, FX command. So we'll add that in now. OS byte equals send FFF4. So that's, that's correct there. Right, so the way we set this up to uh, build, okay, do our Control Shift P. That gives us our palette. I'm just trying to beep. There we go. And it limit us to all the BBSCs here. Okay. So we want to create a new build target. Okay. So we click that. And then it gives us constants ASM or video one.asm. We're going to choose video one. Okay. Now that will create us a tasks.json in here. Okay. There's only one thing we've got to edit in that. And if we look down at oops, if we look down at our video here, we called our program on the disk video one. Now, if we go to the task.json, this command here will boot a program on the disk called main, but there isn't one called main. We've called it video video one. So let's just save that, and that's it. Everything else is all boilerplate, and we can leave it as it is. Right, so what we do, we go into video1.asm, make sure bbm is closed, okay, and then we do our command palette again, do beeb, okay, so we want to build the target, okay, which is F7, okay, so we will hit that, hit that the first time, okay, there's our, there's our assemble program, okay, there's only a few lines. Okay, there it is. Okay, so to run it, we do um, run the selected target, which should be F9. So let's click that. Oh, that was me messing around. I changed the mode to mode two on there, but it is it is working. So look, we can use the F keys. I, I was just wondering why it wasn't working earlier. So we'll change that back to ampersand 16 and we'll change that back to seven. Okay, save that, we hit F7, F9, there we go. Okay, right, so the next thing we want to do is get rid of this escape key. So we do that by running the assembly language equivalent of FX2290. Now let's look at how we do that. Right, the way we do that, let's put a label on here. We load the accumulator with the hex 
of E5. I think that's the same as this, but it's the, that's mode, that's FX. But instead of um, writing the OS character, then the value, and then doing it again, we load the X register with what we want it. So it's FX229, comma 1 to escape, to disable the escape. And then come on naught to re-enable it. So let's load that with one, and then we use that OS byte. We J S R O S B Y T S O S byte. Okay, and that should effectively do it. Let's just try that. So we'll do quick F7, F9. Okay, yeah, I'm hitting escape. It's doing absolutely nothing. Okay, do a control break, and it works. Okay, so I'm looking at this, okay, and there's something I should have done with the Commodore 64 stuff, but these are all things that we may want to use again in other other programs, okay. Mode, uh, well, yeah, mode, we won't want to change the mode to anything. Obviously, that, that's static at the moment. This one will be the same. So what? why don't we... Enable escape. Okay. And re enables default. There's a comment there. Escape routine. Okay, so we'll do exactly the same as this without the RTS. Oh, yeah, no, we will need an RTS because we're going to make this a little routine. Okay. So we're going to copy that, okay, and we'll change that to a zero, okay. We could preserve the accumulator in the X register, but because it, it's we're not going to be running it in the middle of doing something important, this will be the, the start of our pro of our whatever program we're doing, okay. So let's let's do a new assembly file, and we'll call it routines.asm, okay. And what we'll do is, we'll, for now, we'll copy these. Okay, and we'll paste them into here. Okay, so let's uh, delete these out of here. Okay, and what we want to do, I think right near the bottom at the end, because we can't import these at the start. Okay, this is, a, this is just variables, it's not actual code. But at the start, we can't import them because we want our program to start here. And we don't know what it's going to, we don't know what the addresses before is going to be. So we're better off for now importing it at the end. Okay. So we'll do here, we'll do include. I mean, if we were doing a huge program where every, every byte of memory was important, we'd, we'd, we'd have a fixed place for that and we'll do a ORG command before it. Okay, but, but for now we'll include it at the end okay because if we look at both of these routines okay we can jump we can JSR to them and it will return us back to our program for both okay okay let's put a comment in here so we know disable default escape routine escape key will return ASCII value of 27 um, we could be really clever in our comments, okay, we'll put on our calculator, we'll put 27 in there, okay, and we know the hex is 1B, percent 1B, so we can refer to that later, okay, so we'll save that in there, and here, on here, we'll do JSR disable escape so let's uh let's give that a little uh, a little test okay so we'll do an f7 okay no errors f9 there we go and it still works fine no the escape does not work okay so maybe we can do the same with our um disable cursor flash this Enable K 
cursor flash. Disable the blinking, annoying, flashing cursor. Okay, so this is going to be a VDU command, isn't it? Okay, uh, it was 23,1,0, eight zeros basically after that. And I think probably we have to do a carriage return after that, so it pops it in. So let's have a look how we're going to do that. Let's do it in here first so we can, we can see where it's actually working. So we'll put some new... new Okay, um, let's do a little label. Let's do, let's put our parameters in. Cursor off params. Okay, and we'll put those, we'll do them in reverse order. Okay, so there's going to be 10, there's eight zeros. Is it going to be 10? Uh, Oh, we'll count them up anyway cursor off parameters okay and to do bytes of data we instead of the commodore 64 we did a dot bytes we do um equs which is equal to the st a string or decimal value it's not a, it's not a, a, a byte so there's the carriage return we're going to do this in reverse order we're going to do eight zeros I'll show you why we're doing it in re reverse order. Then the 1, then the 23. So it's the VDU, 23, 1, and carriage return. There's probably a much easier way of doing this, but this is the way I'm going to do it for now. Okay. So there's 1, 2. So there's 11 of them, but we can go from 10 down to 0. Okay. So... Let's load the X register with um, the number 10. Ooh. A. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Auto text, Freudian slip. Okay. Um, put a loop cursor off. Okay. And what I like doing with the loop with, with, with um, loops now is doing this. So if we put any labels inside, they'll be unique to this. So we can use a label loop all over the place as long as this this bit is in brackets here. Okay. Okay. So what we do is we load the accumulator with the cursor off params, comma x, which will be plus ten. So it's adding ten to. Uh, into it so that'd be there that's zero that's 10 so it's loading 23 okay jsr os right character okay decrease the x register okay sorry we need to put a, a, a loop in there okay So if it's not zero, okay, we keep going back. That, that should pretty much do that. Okay, or well, should we test it here first? Uh, yeah, uh, let's, where's our RTS gone? There it is. Okay, so let's pop. No, that should be fine. Now we're going to move all that anyway. Uh, let's just make sure it assembles. Okay. Yeah, that's all fine. There's our assemble code, and these are this is our data there. So let's hit F9. Oh, it's only gone and work. Look, no flashing cursor. Okay, well let's put this somewhere that's usable. Okay, so let's look in our routines. Okay, disable cursor flash. We're going to do it inside this. I should do that. Oh, I haven't got loops and other labels in these, so I don't really need to. Okay, so. Uh, la, 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 la. Right, let's put the whole lot in there. Oh, it's obviously, we'll take that out. So we'll cut that out. Okay, we'll pop it in here. Okay. We've got a, a, a label inside it anyway. So. 
That would just do it. And I suppose we could do a curse at Ulmon as well. Oh, no, do we need... No, we can just redo the mode. That's fine. That's fine. We'll just change the mode. So this should just go through. Oh, we need to... Uh, first of all... Yes. LDX. With number 10 for ASCII A. Okay. I know I'm double standing in here. Look, I've done, this, these are just decimal. And this, is a, this is an ASCII, but I'm just... That was easy, easy to work out the VDU command we were running because it's backwards. Okay, so that should do it. So uh, we don't, we don't, we don't need that here. JSR curse. What would it be called? The routine. Disable cursor flash. Did we put an RTS on here? No, we didn't. So it's never going to come back to our main program <laughs> like all the others. So we need to return back. So it hits there and then returns back. Okay. So that should do exactly what it just did, but we've now tidied it up into a, a routine in routines that we can reuse in other programs. So let's uh, let's give it a build and give it a run. And there we go. No escape, no cursor flash, but everything else is fine. Perfect. So, the last thing I want to do is this mode here, okay? This bit of code to do the mode. I want to be able to use that in other programs, but I don't want to be limited just to mode seven. Okay, so what we're gonna do, and again, I should have sort of looked into this more on the Commodore 64, because the same is there, is use a macro where a macro is assembler, is a part of the assembler. It doesn't, the macro isn't in the code or in the 6502. This is an assembler routine where you can call a block of code with some, with some parameters and it will generate the code for you with the parameters you've used. And whatever parameter you send it, it will generate the correct code for you. So let's set a new file up here and we'll call this macros.asm. Okay, so this is our, let's copy, we'll copy it for now. Let's just put a line in, so we'll copy that for now. Okay, and we'll put our code here. Okay, that's gonna be the same, whatever we use. This is gonna be uh, a variable value, okay? So the way we define a macro, let's just do a line there. We do macro, and we'll just call it mode. And then we put our variables, okay, separated by a comma. So our variable for this, there's only one, it's going to be screen mode, okay, which will be the screen mode number, which will be seven, zero, whatever. Okay, so we'll put that to end macro. You know, it's B by SM, the assembler directors are in capitals. And what we want to do, instead of using that there, it's a hash because we always use a hash when we're using numbers and not memory location contents. We'll just copy that and put it there. Simple as that, that is our macro. Okay, so we'll call it and we send it the number, which would be seven in this case, and this will generate this. So you call the macro as many times as you want and it will generate the code. So if you call it a hundred times, it will generate the code a hundred times in your memory, but that's, a lot of programs did that, Turbo Macro Assembler being one of them. Okay, so all we need to do now is we need to obviously include the macro in here. Include macros.asm. Okay, and now we just need to call it. And you know how simple this will be to call it? Macro name and the variable mode with capitals see i've used capitals mode seven just like we're using basic okay let's see if that works the assembled the assembled um code should be exactly the same if we scroll up we can look here oh there we 
there's our mode, so it's loading 16, storing it in that address, loading 7, storing at that address, and that code. Then it carries on with our disable escape. So yeah, the code is exactly the same. So when we run it, it should be exactly the same, which of course it is. Okay, so we've now used a macro and uh, a routines file. Uh, some some things we should have done more in the Commodore, but again, I was learning at the same time as you guys, so. There we go. Right, what's next? We need to um, print our nice little welcome message, don't we? Press any key or escape. Which is here. So let's, um, what should we do with this? Okay. Let's call it intro, text, press keys or escape to quit. And we'll do a capital P there. And we'll, we'll do a zero terminator on it. So that when, when the loop goes through, it'll go one, two, it'll go through all these until it hits a zero and then we can use the B and E to re re continue the loop and then it will be it will only do that while zero isn't being read which is fine okay so let's print that to the screen okay so this is our intro loop here so it's yep so we don't, we've got mode seven is our intro loop. Oh yeah, we, we did put all the dots on there, didn't we? So we called it intro text, didn't we? Yeah, intro text. So load intro text, all right. Oh. Right, so these are Commodore 64 variables here, okay. So that's, that's going to go and repeat, okay? So character loop is where, which is down here, that's where it's going to wait for us to um, type a character into the into the screen. So, okay, so we want, that will load a character for the intro, go on X, it will go through it. BEQ, which means if we have read that zero terminator, it goes straight to car loop. Well, let's get rid of that. We'll never get there. Okay. So we want to go to car loop there. Okay. Well, let's put our RTS into there. Well, no, let's just put it at the end because we're going to gradually uncomment things, aren't we? Okay. So we'll put it. There's all our load. Here's quit. Yeah, look. Okay. So eventually we'll get to there, okay? Everything else is commented out. So, back to how we were. So it'll go through our intro text until it hits the zero terminator. Then it'll go to car loop, which does nothing. Okay, because it's all commented out. So it'll just RTS. Okay, so hopefully that'll print that on the screen for us. Screen mem doesn't exist, okay? So it's, it's mode seven screen mem. Okay, because that's what we've got in our constants. So that would not have assembled. So let's see if this assembles. Oh, I didn't like something. Unrecognised token. Ah, ha, 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 yes. It's a BBC. Okay, look. When we're putting um, text in, it's B by SM. We've got to do E, Q, U, S. Okay, there's no dot text or dot byte, what we've got. That's that's what we do. Okay, let's try again. Oh, still didn't like that. What didn't it like? Ugh, intro text. Stupid typo. I was looking too deeply into it. Ah, oh, look, it assembles fine now. So let's hit run. Oh. So, it seems to have missed off the, the, yes, of course, 
I see why it's done that. Okay. It's done that because it's finished the program and it's popped up with the old prompt there, which overwrote it. That's fine, okay, for now. That's absolutely fine. Okay, because we're going to be asking it for a key in a second. Okay. We can't press escape to quit because we haven't looked for it yet. Okay. So, now we can carry on with our um, getting a character. Okay. Let's see what it's doing. Car loop, CHRM, we don't have that. That was our Commodore 64 one. We're using Oz read character, OS read character. And we'll pop that there. Compare it with zero. Okay. If it, if it is zero, back to car loop until something's pressed. If zero means no key is pressed. Okay. Compare it with 103. Now that was run stop, wasn't it? So that was, um, we want escape, which is 27, ASCII 27, which is 1B. Of course, we've got it in our routines here. Uh, is it a routine? Yes, 1B. So look, we compare that to B. Let's keep that as, as, B, as A corn as we can. Okay, so if it is escape key is pressed, it will go to the quit, which is down here. Okay, which will just return to the subroutine. Okay. Okay, now this is what we did on the 64 to um, to set the carry fag and subtracts 40. That's to convert it from the ASCII code to the screen code. We don't have to do that on the BBC. On mode seven, um, you, you get what you see basically. So this this will wait for our character, and we can test that and see if it does um, wait until we press escape, because it won't it won't do anything else. Well, actually, no, it will do this screen loop, won't it? I suppose we can run it and not press any key uh, or just escape. Let's just see what happens. Oh yes, it doesn't know where screen mem is, does it? Okay, well, let's just change that now to mode 7 screen mem. And we're going to fix this crappy code that I wrote. So it should be 200. No, so 250. Ugh, that didn't work very well, did it? Don't want it to go over the memory. Okay, so that'll do a thousand times. Okay, go back to screen loop. Let us, actually we want to make that 45 because it'll still go over, because it does it 255 times. So we want to do 745. I mean, we could, do, we, we could work all these out, but ah, it's, it's microseconds difference. We'll just be looping over them a couple of times. Right. Will this assemble? It did. Will this run? Let's press escape. And it quits. Fantastic. Let's run it again. Let's just boot our disk. Let's press, press a key. A. Whoa! -ho 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 -ho. There it is. B. C. G, space, clear screen, P, L, look, it's instant, it's just like our Commodore 64. Escape, okay, so, escape works, 
Not so good. We need to finish this off. We don't, we, you know, we've got no flashing cursor and no anything else. Okay. And um, the escape key still doesn't work. That should not be an issue. Okay. Let's do exit text. Oh, I'm really having a bad typing day. Um, good bye and thank you because we're polite okay and um, we'll do a zero terminator on it okay right let us do an exit loop near the end at quit so we don't need this CLS we don't have a CLS we're gonna we're gonna redo a mode and JSR first first of all enable escape so that will re-enable that will run this routine in here to re-enable our escape key Okay, then we're going to do mode 7 again, which will clear the screen and reset the VDU, so we have our flashing cursor. Okay, then we'll put our exit loop here. Okay, that's exit text. Okay, and then... Go load the X register with zero, okay, because it's starting at zero before we do that. Okay, there, I mean, these could also be macros. We could pass in the screen memory address, start address, or the address we want to write to, and the, um, the t where the text is. I wonder if that would work, passing um, variables in. Who knows? Maybe that's one to try at the end. Okay. So this should effectively reset everything, okay? When we finish, let's see if this works. Okay, okay, F9. One, two, three, four, escape. Goodbye and thank you. Ah, what's it waiting for? Oh, ah, something isn't right. Hmm. What have I done here? Let's look at our intro loop. Oh, but you've got a BEQ there. Ugh, yes. Car loop. It's going back up to the character loop, isn't it? So, that's, the quit is there. So we'll do we'll do one called we'll do one called exit. Okay. Cool. Return to basic. Okay. Return to basic. Okay, we'll put our little dot there. Copy that. And there we go. Return to basic. Builds fine, runs fine. Return. Ah! Right. It's popped our, um, it's popped our um, prompt there. Now, I think there is a new line, kernel address. Let me have a look in the manual. Because I don't think we've put a carriage return. It won't actually work, and the, 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 the prompt is still there because the text, the cursor has not moved while we put those in. Okay. So let, a new line will be amazing because no matter what's on there, it will, do, it will move the cursor level down one. Right, let me just have a look. And we'll see wh where it is. Okay, here we are. Looking in the manual. FFE7 here. Is a line feed carriage return to the screen. So we can add that to our code. Into our constants. OS new line. FFE7. Save that. Okay, um, uh, there, so, OS, new line. 
So let's run that. Assemble that. That works. Run that. Keys. Goodbye and thank you. That looks perfect. Look, we've got a flashing cursor. Escape's working. That pretty much wraps it up. Really, just one little experiment we can do. Let's try and put these loops on a on a on a macro. I don't know how well this would work. Okay. Not sure how well that JMP would work. Okay, well let's let's this is the whole macro here. Right, so Macro print uh, memory sc uh, screen memory screen mem address and a text label. Okay, print something and we'll do our brackets so that um, hmm. yeah I'm not sure how this is going to work because well, that loop needs to be these need to be unique and if you use it more than once yeah I mean we could we could make a routine and we store the address we can store the address of where we want it printed into zero page and then pull it out again. Okay, that's going to be something for the next video, okay? I need to do some homework on that. Okay, but for now, this ends the first video. Okay, so we've done exactly the same as we've done on our Commodore 64. We've done it on a BBC Micro. We've actually introduced the concept of macros and um, having a, a separate assembler file with our common routines that we can refer to. Okay. Um, we've done some decent screen stuff like disabling the escape key and stopping the cursor flashing, some of this native stuff. And we're, um, we've set up our cross compiler. Okay. I hope everything was enjoyable for this and um, you have all followed along fine, those of you who decided to do it. And um, any questions, um, put them in the comments below. And um, I will see you on the next video.